In the culinary world, there are always innovators with new ideas and products. But turning a dream into a reality requires money, lots of it. Now they'll have the chance to get both funding and guidance from two of the industry's heaviest hitters. Joe Bastianich is one of the country's culinary giants. By combining great food with smart business, he's created an empire that includes 30 restaurants, co-owns Italy, a high-end Italian market, and two best-selling books. We're not here to teach you. We're here to make an investment. If this was school, you'd be paying us tuition. Tim Love is a celebrity chef and master of urban Western cuisine. He owns five award-winning restaurants throughout Texas and has his own retail empire of rubs, sauces, and cookware. I'm a food guy. Tell me how you make the freaking food. Hundreds of culinary entrepreneurs in dozens of categories presented their concepts. Each week, two of the most promising get an audience with Joe and Tim. We are bacon bacon. We are cracking kanji. Pasta made from chickpeas. The team with the most potential to make big money will get $7,500 and 36 hours to beef up their brand, refine their business plan, <gasps> and turn this empty space into their dream restaurant. And they'll do this with the help of Joe and Tim's consultant, Waylon Lucas. Is that really a half a million dollar effort? She's a pastry chef turned entrepreneur who built her own brand around the unique concept of baked donuts. With all the money coming from their own pockets, Joe and Tim call all the shots. Is it gonna happen? 15 minutes. I'm the guy that believed in you guys. They might compete for a concept. What's the deal? Tim, your offer actually put me on my heels. It's a pretty aggressive offer. Make no offer at all. Obviously, we're very far apart. So therefore, I'm out. Or even invest together. This dream has finally come true. This is Restaurant Startup. Exotic ethnic flavors have never been hotter. So this week, Joe and Tim will hear a pair of pitches, a little known dish from the Far East, and a variation on a popular Middle Eastern staple. All right, let's see what these guys got. Right. Up first, Crack and Kanji, three line cooks from Seattle, Washington, who believe they have a formula to bring a little known Asian rice dish into the mainstream. Crack and Kanji is the next big thing all in one bowl. We're three line cooks from Seattle. We're in the back of the house. You never see us. My family is relying on me. I want to bring it home to them. Having somebody invest in Crack and Kanji is the next step, I think, in all of our careers. If you don't get this opportunity very often, we're ready to take it. What do you got? Hi, I'm Garrett Doherty. I'm Shane Robinson. I'm Herbal Donia, and together, we are Crack and Kanji. Kanji is basically made of rice, water, onions, garlic, and ginger. Kanji, for me, is very special. Born and raised in the Philippines, I think about my grandmother, Nanai. She would essentially take one cup of rice and be able to make enough kanji to feed my entire family. Kraken kanji is a hip new twist on rice porridge. Just like sushi took America by storm and pho has become more popular, we're confident Kraken kanji can be the next Asian food sensation. We'd like you to share in our future success. We want $350,000 for 20% of our company. Our end goal is to open up our own brick and mortar so we can serve kanji every day, not just once a month. And with your help and money, we would like to release the Kraken. Here's what I think. Let's try the food. All right. Yeah, proof's in the pudding here. Literally. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> Closest to you guys, you have the uh, lugao with pork belly adobo. And back, you have the crab curry kanji with fried soft shell crab. And this is the uh, jasmine rice? Yes. What's this white creamy sauce on top? It's a calamansi aioli, just to kind of give it a little uh, sour punch and jazz. Wow. I always say in the food world, we need fat, acid, and salt. Both of these have that. It tastes great. It's a very complex and good dish, and really kind of the opposite of what I was thinking when you told me you are going to give me rice porridge. Right. It's clear that you guys can cook. But we're not here to hire cooks, though. We're here right. to invest in a business. Right. Who's in charge of the business here? For the couple pop-ups we've done, I've, I've kept control of the, the finances with it. I'm responsible for all the buying and getting everything to the, the venue. As of right now, I'm just a cook. You're responsible for being from the Philippines. I'm responsible for eating it. Yeah. So when you do the pop-up, do you sell out? The first pop-up, we sold out in two hours. We had a line out the door. So has Kraken Kanji ever put a dollar in any of your pockets? Yes. How, How much? much has it made? 18000 How much money have y'all all put together? $5,000 $5, over the course of the eight pop-ups. So you're not making any bank on this right now. Uh, that doesn't for, sound for like For us, it. it's been very successful. But how do you define success? You're not making money. You do a pop-up eight times. That's success for you? We never lost any money. You've got a successful we, response. Yes. Let's talk about this brain. Let's talk about this cracking thing. 
It reminds me of, like, talking about somebody's ass. I mean, what's Kraken? Kraken? Well, it's a mythical fi figure that, uh, the Kraken in Clash of the Titans? It's kind of like where everybody knows it from. You got two guys right here that are yeah. potentially going to give you $350,000 that have no idea what the hell it is. The logo? It's phallic and vaginal all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. If we're going to put real dollars into this thing, we want something that's a little bit more identifiable. Okay. What I need to know is, we build this great food, but how do you turn that into a restaurant? We wanted this to be a, a really hip, modern place. That sounds like trendy to me, which is yeah. the disaster for restaurant. We give you 350000 Tell me how you're spending the money. Well, we purchased a, ve a venue. OK, so how much are you allocating that? That's what I'm asking. $150,000. OK. And then seventy dollars to $85,000 to okay. outfit the space. If All right, it's, you're 220. You know, Keep going. We wanted three to six months of uh, backup capital. Three or six? Six. OK, six months in the bank is what? Well, our operating capital would be $125,000. So that's $345,000. And then we also have inventory, which is, I think, $40,000. What's the top line? How much money is coming in a year? About $700,000 a year. 700000 a year. You're valuing the restaurant at $1.75 million, and you're telling me it's only going to gross 700000 This is a starting point. I know, but you, this is a start up. I'm not going to invest $350,000 to get 20% of a restaurant that you value at 1.7 million that only brings in 700,000. Are you putting any money in it? Uh, you guys got any money in it? No. You're gonna put zero in it. Do the circle of math there. I'm really good at math, and that, that circle never connects. Plus, you know, commerce without margin is a hobby, and I'm not interested in investing in your hobby. So here's the deal, we got a lot to think about. So I'll let you guys go on your way, man. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you. It's your classic three line cooks trying to sell the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Rami's Falafel Fusion. Three friends from Portland, Oregon, seek funds for their spin on a Middle Eastern classic falafel. I used to work for a big retail company. I managed $6 million stores, but my passion was to cook. I left my job, I started Falafel Fusion, I put a lot of money into the business, and that was a huge risk. Our food is the best, and I say that with confidence because no one else is doing this. If they invest in us, They'll make money. This was all about for them. This is my future that's on the table here. OK. What do you got? Hi, I'm Rami Armands. I'm Christopher Crary. And I'm Matt Hadigan. And together, we are Rami's Falafel Fusion. It's a food cart company out of Portland, Oregon. And right now, we have two food carts. And we're looking for a brick and mortar. We're asking for $250,000 for 15% of equity in the company. In 1970, falafel became something that's very popular in the US. We looked at all the falafel that's in the market. It's all made with chickpeas or garbanzo beans. Very fatty and has a lot of calories. So we use fava beans instead of the chickpeas. It's a third of the fat and a third of the calories, meaning that it's a much leaner, much healthier option. Our hope is that we have the whole country saying, you'll never feel awful when eating falafel. So when I was 17, me and my family moved here to the US from Egypt. We were seeking a better life and followed the American dream. If you guys help us out, I'll be able to get that dream to become true and make my grandmother proud, and we might get super rich while doing it. So who wants to partner with us to make the world healthier and more fun? We want to make money, primarily. <laughs> <laughs> Let's taste this. Uh... Let's taste the food here. Let's start with the number one thing. So this is a falafel burger. Correct. There's a brioche bun with a falafel patty, pico de gallo. And then we have a fusion quesadilla, caramelized onions, caramelized cremini mushrooms. And then we fry the falafels, we smash them, and we put them in there. So you got like Mexican, Greek, exactly. Middle Eastern. Correct. The exterior has a good crispiness to it. The interior, like it reminds me of quinoa, yes. almost. What do you think of the, uh, what are you calling it, a quesadilla? Yeah, quesadilla. Well, I mean, I love quesadillas. Honestly, I think that's a really good one. It's it's pretty good. It's pretty full flavored. Thank you. Actually, the food's good. It's good. The food's good, guys. Tell us about your cash flow. Tell us about your business. So last year we did three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Okay. What was your profit? Uh, Forty-eight thousand dollars. Rami, no offense, but that margin sucks. Especially at a cart. In my opinion, you should be bringing thirty-five percent to the yep. bottom line. Yep. And so fifteen percent scares me a little bit. It's it's because it, one, it's it's new business. So new business has nothing to do with with with, with what the margin so, is. Uh, I'm gonna be frank. I didn't know anything about the food business. You know, when I when I got in the food cart uh, for six months, I worked twenty-two hours a day. I sat in front of all the successful food carts, count how many people walked through the door. I came out with average what. I like this. It, yeah, it, it, exactly. it, you know, when it rains or it doesn't rain, I came out with an average. Year lowest and and we got we got you go we got you go get her attitude. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money, so we got to be sure you guys are confident in what you're doing. I think the, the biggest problem I have in this whole pitch is branding. 
I hate well, to say I like I, I like Rami in front of me more than Rami right. on the logo. What's yeah. going on with this logo and name? With this logo, I mean, it's it's very Portland, right? It's it's a flat image. Uh, one of the first ideas we worked on was kind of like. I think it's like, very flat. Yeah. Wait, yeah. That's not a compliment. Yeah. Go ahead. Flat is. I mean, I, I would flat say. Flat is Portland. Yeah, but you know what? We don't want to have one store. So we're not concerned about Portland. We're concerned about the United States. If you States. don't like the logo, that's it's something gone. that, yeah, it's gone. All right, guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We have a tough decision to make. That's exactly right.